It's good to have you here. I know that recently you pointed out that the pandemic is accelerating the adoption of technology that will boost corporate profits. Help us understand where we stand at this moment in time. I got a 10-year yield below 1.3 percent, and I got WTI falling. It's almost at 62 bucks a barrel. What is that telling the average investor? Well, uh, I think that uh, we've hit peak growth in uh, economic activity, uh, peak growth in, in earnings. And uh, I think we, are, we certainly are not going to get uh, as kind of the kind of fiscal stimulus that we've had over the past uh, year and a half, uh, nor the monetary stimulus. So uh, I think uh, overall, the market's uh, handling all this uh, remarkably well. Uh, doesn't look like much of a taper tantrum today anyways. Uh, uh, I think it's been widely signaled, and I think the perception is that the Federal Reserve uh, is now seriously moving in the direction of tapering because the economy is doing fine. But any way you slice it or dice it, it's going to be slower growth, slower earnings growth, slower economic growth. And that's probably keeping the bond yield down and uh, giving some uh, weakness to the oil, oil patch. Ed, this is Emily. Over the next four to five months left of 2021, what do you think it's going to take to push the markets higher, especially as we're heading into that decelerating growth environment you're talking about? Well, decelerating growth is still growth. And so I think that earnings are going to continue to grow. And uh, this market uh, is, has doubled since March 23rd, and about half of that is because of the valuation multiple, and the other half is because of earnings. We've actually had an earnings melt-up, an earnings-led melt-up uh, since last May. Earnings have been uh, very strong. Analysts have been raising their estimates on a regular basis, and uh, profit margins have held up superbly well in the face of all the anecdotal stories about costs going up. Uh, so I, I think just the fundamentals uh, will, will drive the market higher. I don't think the valuation multiple has a lot a lot more upside here because it's already quite high at uh, a forward P.E. of 22. Well, that's where perhaps some of us average investors get a little confused. How can we have profit margins continuing to improve when prices are going up? At what point does the bill come due? Well, that, that gets us back to what the original point you were making about productivity. Uh, I think that uh, the only way you can explain how profit margins could be at a record high in an environment where we've seen labor costs going up, commodity costs going up, it's got to be productivity. And I, I think the pandemic did, in fact, accelerate the pace at which technology is being implemented, is being used to augment the mental and physical productivity of workers. Workers are very scarce. Uh, you got to hug them and hold them and uh, be really nice to them, pay them more. And the only way that's going to make sense is if you can increase your productivity. So if we think over a little bit further of a time horizon, perhaps the next two to three years, do you think it's going to be then these tech companies that are really on the forefront of innovation, uh, driving down some of these labor costs that are going to ultimately uh, see the biggest run up because sure. of this uh, increase in profit margins? I think that's a great point. I think technology companies continue to be uh, the leaders in uh, innovation to increase productivity. Uh, but I kind of view uh, all companies now as technology companies. Any company that isn't using technology to uh, augment uh, its productivity is going to find that the competitors are, and they're going to uh, uh, be out of luck. They're going to they could go out of business. So I think there's a tremendous amount of pressure here to use technology innovations to uh, deal with the labor shortages, and that means that um, you really have to think of uh, like railroads and trucks and. Uh, chemicals as almost as technology companies, because they're all going to use, they all already are, and will use more technology to increase their efficiencies. We got the news yesterday about Amazon, uh, you know, looking at brick and mortar. Uh, and yet you look at Target and Walmart, given what you just said about everybody being a technology company, having now successfully incorporated e-commerce and technology into their business models. Have right. we reached that point where the technology giants are not innovating fast enough, and that those who have been at a deficit for the past couple of quarters, even years, decades perhaps, 20 years, are now at a point where they could once again exceed? Well, I, I think um, even before the pandemic, it was pretty clear that uh, a lot of companies uh, that compete with Amazon got the message that they had to uh, uh, improve their game. They had to use more technology to compete with Amazon. So in many ways, Amazon did uh, a lot of companies a favor uh, by uh, kicking them in the, in the behind and getting them to move forward in technological innovation. So when the pandemic hit, 
lot of these uh, com competing retailers were actually in a very good position uh, to to go online and to uh, carry forward with their uh, their sales. Uh, so I think uh, it's just an example of how uh, uh, competition really forces uh, everybody uh, to uh, up their game in the technology field. And Ed, on the topic of rising prices, one of the points you've noted recently is that inflation has yet to demonstrate that it's actually transitory. And I'm wondering what data or how much more data you're looking for for the market sure. to have been proven that this is, in fact, a transitory phenomenon. Well, there's a whole range of inflation indicators. There's, uh, there's surveys, there's the purchasing managers indexes, small businesses. Uh, all of those are still uh, quite elevated. Uh, you're starting to get a little glimmer of a, of a top, but it's certainly not a spike. It's not like straight up and straight down. Uh, and then anecdotally, there's still plenty of uh, uh, stories about how difficult it is to get labor, to get parts, and, and so on. So we're not out of the woods there yet. But uh, look, the, the, economy is, the economic growth is going to slow down. It's, it's natural. There's no way you can maintain the kind of growth we've had. And much of that was uh, just coming out of a very severe recession, even though it was short. Uh, but looking ahead here, I think uh, we are going to find that uh, uh, all in all, the economy will grow and inflation will moderate. But as I said, I'm very empirical about it. I'm not seeing it yet. Uh, you've also, by, by the way, and getting back to a point about the economy growing, been in the lead calling for 5,000 on the S&P 500. Yeah. Um, do you think we could see that? Because we had an analyst on who was telling us we could see that by the end of this year. Is that realistic? Or are we, if we're at peak growth, no. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's uh, it's possible. Uh, I, I'll tell you, I've been uh, a bull since uh, 2009. Um and uh, the market pretty well kept pace with my forecast, or my forecast kept pace with the market, I should say. Uh, but uh, since uh, this uh, bull run, since March 23rd, every time I put out a, a bullish forecast uh, for the end of the year or next year, it gets run over uh, by the stampeding bulls. So, um, look, 5,000 is not that ambitious from where we are now. I, I think, you know, after doubling, uh, after the S&P 500 doubling, uh, since March 23rd, gains of 5 to 10 percent uh, looking forward at an annual rate, I think, are very likely. 